Yo, yeah, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Mr. Chief Says, back once again. And I just wa got finished watching my guy from TLTG. And uh, thanks for the shout out, my friend. Um, he referenced one of my videos I did on that fragrance from Abercrombie and Fitch Blue the other day. And it, I, I can't admit that was a pretty, a pretty funny thing I said in that video. Uh, but for the most part, as I was watching his review, or excuse me, the exact same fragrance, the uh, Abercrombie and Fitch Blue, um, he kind of inspired me to get up and do something. As I was just sitting here watching some movies on um, Netflix, but I came up with an idea. And y'all know me, this may not be something new. Uh, this may be something that somebody has already done, but just worded it different. Uh, but for the most part, hold on, look kind of hazy. For the most part, um, this video is going to be titled, uh, I didn't know whether to go with five fragrances or five fragrance houses um, that I'm sick of hearing about. Um, I didn't know. I guess by the end of the video, I'll decide what I want to label this video as. But as of right now, there are five fragrances that I have. Well, I actually have three. And the other three I don't have. One of them I'm not going to list. Um, for the simple fact that the house, the fragrances that this person puts out. Some of them do smell good, um, others don't to my nose, but I don't think they're a big enough house to be mentioned over this other one. So I'm going to skip the last one and I'm going to just do the five instead of six. So I have five fragrance, um, fragrances that I am absolutely sick and tired of hearing about. You guys know Mr. Cheap Sense, I don't bite my tongue, I don't give two shits about what other people think. I know I'm going to get some flack for some of the fragrances that I have in this collection. No, this is not because I hate these fragrances, but the hype and the hysteria behind them were just so great that after a while, you just get tired of listening to everybody go on and on and on. Every video, every reviewer you hear talk about these same fragrances and they always... And I understand that they're in the top five or top three or whatever for a reason. They're very popular. They're crowd pleasing. Uh, they're well known. They made a lot of sales. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I get all of that. But I just get so sick of hearing about these fragrances and sometimes the fragrance houses. So let's jump into it. Now my number five and my number one. Are going to be pretty much in the same category. Um, I could have stuck these two together. But I'm going to keep them separate. Because this one is actually made by a totally different house. And it is from the house of Armoth. And the fragrance that I am talking about. That I am so sick of hearing people talk about. And I only reference it whenever somebody else talks about it. Or when I wear it. Uh, and I talk about it and I don't talk about it much and every time I bring up the subject somebody always jumps in the comment section and asks me what's the the batch date on it and all this kind of stuff and there goes conversation now I gotta go look the date up I gotta look up batch codes and all this just because people don't believe that this still is a beast mode fragrance the one here I have in my hand not the ones that you guys are ordering now from Armoff or Fragrance X or Fragrance Dunlopped over the hill or whatever the hell kind of fragrance website you're using. This one for me is a beast mode performing fragrance. But I, I got to a point where I was so sick and tired of hearing about Club de Nuit Intense Man that it sickened me and I stopped <laughs> I stopped actually stopped wearing it for a while. Uh, not because of people talking about it so much, but um I personally don't want to use up all of this juice and then have to order another one and it doesn't perform like this one. 
So um, I've been kind of holding this, holding off on this one. This is supposedly a clone of Creed Aventus, but you can't technically call this a clone for the simple fact that the openings are different. This one opens with a note of lemon and some other stuff, and Creed Aventus has pineapple, has birch, and all that. And I don't think this has any birch or anything in it. But the dry down does turn to smell like the dry down of Aventus. So if you want to continue calling this a clone, then sure, by all means. But technically, you can't call this a clone. Uh, in my book, now somebody else may beg to differ because everybody's opinion is going to be different. But it is what it is. So from the House of Armoff, Club de Nuit Intense Man is one I was so sick and tired of hearing about over and over and over and over. Um, next up is one that I did smell when it was in stores. And uh, I wanted it, but the price tag on this particular brand or house is somewhat ridiculous the prices on them never really go down and if you can find one for a decent price then please by all means pick it up uh i actually got this one i believe in a trade and it was just a partial bottle like maybe it's like maybe a quarter in here and it is from uh the house of chanel this is blue day chanel and this is the Eau de Toilette version, but it don't really matter. The Eau de Parfum, the Parfum, the the Women's Foom, Typhoon. I wouldn't give a damn what you call it. I was just sick of hearing about this shit. Um, like, I understand why people talk about it. It's, it's crowd pleasing. It's people pleasing. Women love it. Men love it. Um, but everybody and their granddaddy who... <laughs> like they were everybody was wearing this and you could not step into an office into a building a club anywhere without smelling this on at least damn near everybody in the club excuse me um i just got so sick of hearing about this fragrance and i finally got my hands on it and guess what i haven't worn it since i got it so that tells you a lot um, I just really wanted it as a trophy just to say I have it. So, I mean, that little bit that's in there, if you can see it, it's like right there. That's more than enough for me. That'll last me for a while, um, even though I don't wear it much. But Blue Day Chanel is another one that I am so sick of hearing of, and I'm glad that it's kind of dying down um, in the chatter rooms. So, that's number four. Number three is one uh, I smelled also the original, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, the original was the Eau de Toilette version, and this one is the Eau de Parfum version, and this actually was given to me, and yes, once again, I'm going to say his name, the mayor of Detroit, thank you again, my friend, and I know he's going to be like, God damn, man, he thanks me at least <laughs> five days a week. Well, I'm grateful of all of my subscribers uh, for sending me whatever it is they send me and being gracious enough to do what you do. And this is actually almost a full bottle because uh, I have used it maybe twice. This is Dior Sauvage. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration. And I personally already had Ventana, which is a clone of Dior Sauvage, which is a very good clone of it, but I got so sick and tired of hearing about Dior Sauvage, it started to make me sick. And then I finally ended up with this bottle, and I appreciated it, <coughs> and I've only worn it <coughs> maybe once or twice, excuse me, <coughs> since I've had it. And, um, like, I, I really don't enjoy the fact that i'm walking around smelling like everybody else 
So the only time I will probably wear this is when it dies down a little bit more. Uh, I think they just came out with another um, flanker of this, which is the Parfum version, I think it is, which <laughs> it's going to be a while before this dies down. So whatever the case may be, this is another one that I'm kind of sick and tired of hearing about. And once again, I will reiterate in the middle of this video now that I don't hate these fragrances, none whatsoever. Uh, I only dislike the prices. They were so expensive. Well, except for uh, the Club de Nuit Intense Man, but the Blue de Chanel, the Sauvage, and the next two I'm going to talk about are very expensive. That's the only thing I hated about them. And I didn't like the fact that every single person on the planet was smelling like these fragrances. So, that's the number three spot. Now, the next two, I don't, well, I think I do. Ah, that hurt so bad. Okay, I do have this particular one from this house. And you guys hook me up with so much stuff that it's crazy. Look at this jar. Every time I open this jar, this one and the other one, it makes my room smell so good, man. All right, so <clears throat> number two is from the house of Tom Ford. And this one is ombre leather, but it's not this particular fragrance that I'm tired of hearing about. It's just the house of Tom Ford. And I know Tom Ford fragrances are uh, very, very good from what I understand. And I've smelled a few. I think I have maybe one or two more for Tom Ford's in this. But just hearing about Tom Ford all the time and knowing that the price is so high and that I refuse to pay that kind of money for these fragrances, um... I just get so sick of hearing about Tom Ford, just Tom Ford, Tom Ford, Tom Ford. It's just crazy. And like I said, once again, guys, I know this is going to like cause a lot of flack. People are going to talk shit, but it just is what it is for me. Sometimes things get so redundant and so mundane and you keep hearing it over and over and over and over and you just get tired of it. And so the fragrances, some of the fragrances from the house of Tom Ford are some that I'm just so sick of listening to people talk about. And they always bring them up and they're always in somebody's uh, top something. And like I said before, for good reason, uh, Tom Ford fragrances are very much so pretty good from what I've smelled. But I'm just tired of hearing about them. And last but not least on this list um, is from the house of Creed. Excuse me. And the only one I am actually sick of hearing about is Creed Aventus. They don't talk about Millicene Imperial quite like they do Aventus. They don't talk about uh, Royal Oud, they don't talk about Green Irish Tweed, they don't talk about Silver Mountain Water, they don't talk about a lot of those other fragrances as much as they talk about Creed. And I know everybody and their great great granddaddy calls Creed the king of this and it's this and that and oh my god Creed is this and like Creed is the king of whatever. I get that. I've smelled a couple of creeds, and to be honest with you guys, this is just my personal opinion, I wasn't impressed. And it could have been the simple fact that I owned this well before I even got my nose on any creed whatsoever. So this was already in my veins as number one in my collection, period, at the time from what I had. Now that has changed since then because I own a lot more better fragrances than what I used to have but for the most part I think just owning Club de Nuit Intense Man and smelling that dry down it already had me hooked and when I smelled Creed Aventus 
it just smelled like another cologne to me. Like it wasn't anything special. It wasn't spectacular. It's not. It wasn't anything to me that wowed me. When I smelled it in Atlanta, straight out the bottle, um, it was like first thing popped in my mind. Soon as soon as I sprayed it, was Club de Nuit Intense Man. That's the first thing that came in my into my mind, and I'm like. I'm not even impressed. Like, I can just wear a Club Day Nui Intense Man that cost me, like, $35, and I'd be satisfied versus paying $250 or $400 for something else. And, like, that's ridiculous to me. So, I think that's what kind of ruined it for me. Now, if I would have never bought Club Day Nui Intense Man and then I smelled Creed, I probably would have felt differently about it, but that's not how it went. But... That's another fragrance that I am so totally am over. I'll be glad when the hype dies down on that one. And maybe the prices will come down more. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings that Creed Aventus is not what it used to be. Doesn't perform. It doesn't smell the same. Um, and it happens. Reformulations happen. Um, people know that sometimes when they got a fragrance that people are connected to. That anytime you put out a flanker or you release a new batch, excuse me, people are going to run, go get it, no matter what the cost. And I'm not one of those guys. I don't fall for the hype train. Now, some things I will go out and buy if somebody does say sometimes that, you know, it's this and that, and I'm curious about it. But for the most part, I don't run out every time a new Sauvage comes out. And I got to have it. No. That's not me. And nine times out of ten, it's just going to smell identical to the older version. It may just be a little bit stronger. So, what's the purpose? Um, every time a new Blue Day Chanel comes out, a flanker, everybody got to run over here and go get it. And then somebody else comes out with something and then everybody shuffles back over to this side to go get it. And then this fragrance house comes out with another one and then they shuffle back. Like, y'all can have that, man. I'm good. Uh, but those are my five. Now, an uh, honorable mention that I'm going to throw in here, and I didn't really want to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's from the house of John Varvatos, and uh, it's Artisan Pure. That's the fragrance that everybody talks about um, for spring and summer. And I got it in a trade or buy, whatever it was, recently. And to me, it wasn't all that. Uh, some people swear by it. Some people live and die by it. But to me, it was just a eh, kind of fragrance. Um, the citrus in it didn't smell... It didn't smell, like, authentic. It smelled generic almost and i know I, I hate using generic i hate using synthetic but that's just what it smelled like it just it didn't smell like a true um citrus to me um it just to me it didn't even wow me like isi miyagi fragrances most of those don't wow me um i took people's advice i bought the low dc uh blue fresh or whatever it is and that was okay. Um, it was kind of citrusy and powdery. Almost reminded me of Dolce & Gabbana light blue. And which I didn't like that one either. Um, and then the the other one, the Old Fresh or whatever it was. Um, I didn't really like that one. But to me that one was better than the one in the blue bottle from Izzy Miyagi. Um, but... Artisan Pure was just not a wow type fragrance to me. I smelled it. It was okay. The performance wasn't really all of that off of my skin. Um, I did get to wear it, I think, once to work and no compliments from it. I got probably about maybe an hour and a half, two hours of projection, if that. And I got about maybe three and a half, four hours of longevity off of my skin. But it was like a real close skin scent. Um, so, with that being said, guys, like I said before, I know I'm going to get some flack for doing this video about fragrances I'm tired of hearing about. Um, I don't wish them to go away, but I do wish that some of the hype would just die down 
and maybe some of the prices will come down so other people will be able to afford some of these fragrances. When people hype stuff up to the highest of hypestivity, um, it really does a number on price gouging. People see that they can get this amount of money or X amount of money out of a fragrance because of the hype, the nostalgia behind it, and it skyrockets prices. Take Midnight in Paris for one. Midnight in Paris used to be one you can buy for like 15, 20 bucks. And this is from what I understand. I have never owned or uh, I've never owned Midnight in Paris, so I don't know. But that's what I heard. It used to be like 20 bucks. And now all of a sudden people want a hundred and something dollars for it. Are you crazy? Like that's ridiculous. I'm not gonna spend that kind of money on that and I used to you used to get it for like 20 bucks that's retarded but I mean you know to each his own people I guess feel like they got to get their money's worth out of something um, I'm not the type of person who's out to try to shit somebody um, that's just not my stilo but um do people still stay say stilo damn I feel old anyway um, that's my list guys I got one other video I'm going to do in a few minutes after this one. So, as soon as this one uploads, I'll be giving you guys another video of a fragrance I wore the other day that I have not talked about on this channel. So, stay tuned for that one. Thanks for all the love and support. Make sure you hit that like button to let YouTube know your boy really is giving his all and that you guys like the content I'm putting out. Make sure you share whatever videos you like. It don't have to be this particular one. It could be something that was funny. It could be something that was serious I did. It can be just a regular old video that I did. Make sure you share it with somebody. Let them know. Especially if they don't know anything about fragrance reviewers or your boy Mr. Cheap Sense. Let them know about me. And maybe you can get them to subscribe so I can get to this thousand uh, subscriber mark a little bit faster. So we can get these live streams going. Thank you guys for watching. Here's to smelling great. Peace.